basic storyline of the series is much the same as the basic storyline of the previous two series in that not much happens. But, uh, but that's the nature of the show, that these, these guys still keep stumbling along, not really finding much, but still with their hopes and dreams of finding gold and, and becoming rich, or at least becoming fulfilled archaeologically. It's made with such love and at such um, an easygoing pace, and it reflects Mackenzie's vibe, which is low-key, interested in nature, and metal detecting as much as making drama. <laughs> After the second series, I took a year off to just see if I wanted to do uh, another one and to collect ideas together, see if I had enough ideas. And, and slowly it did come together. At first I thought it might be a one-off film version, but then I soon realized I had, I had enough ideas to, to make a proper six episode series. And I realized that that's what needed to be done. And the overall story is always about treasure. And all I'll say about that is it features magpies and a field that's going to be taken over and used as a wind farm. So there's a time limit on whether the fellas can find anything. How many times have we searched this field and only now it starts throwing up its treasure? Six weeks time, this will be solar panels as far as the eye can see. Yeah. Less than six weeks. Doesn't exactly make your heart sing, does it? Andy has a job as an archaeologist. He gets disillusioned with that job, so he's no longer an archaeologist. So they're living with my mother, Veronica. Um, and Andy is more emasculated than ever by the situation. He gets very enthusiastic about a tumble-down house where he thinks he can move his family in if they win it at auction. Much to Becky's frustration, Andy isn't manning up, as, as it were, and, um, well, she discovers not quite bringing in the bacon in the way he think he, he purports to be. A lot of archaeologists think there's a lost Roman settlement outside Colchester. There you go, then. Here's to you finding the Essex Herculaneum. We're not going to be here forever just until we get a deposit together. And now that you're working, that's going to happen all the sooner. It's always about um, uh, Andy sort of telling white lies to Becky and trying to get away with it, uh, and Becky seeing straight through him. With Lance, it's all around. There's some great, intricate stories around the women in Lance's uh, life. Uh, you know the cheese? If you cut a corner off it, it makes it harder to... Sl it doesn't matter. Sorry, what? It doesn't matter, it's just the cheese. <laughs> He's reconciled with his daughter, and she's living with him. Uh, and that rapidly becomes an, uh, com complicated by the arrival of um, figures from his past. And he finds himself in uh, romantic entanglements, um, which are beyond his capacity to cope with. So I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff happening with him in this series of trying to negotiate having been a single person with having <laughs> with with now trying to sustain a relationship. That's what it's like. Chaos. She never makes a plan and, and sticks to it, so I never know if she's in. So where does that leave us if you can't come and stay with me on my boat? I know. I, I, I've been looking into remedies for seasickness. So have I. I think you should try hypnotherapy. Lance has got a lot of women issues. And I think they're beautifully written, those scenes. I think they're, you know, really, really good and really good roles for the, the three actresses who are playing uh, opposite him. Today we're in Framlingham, we're in the Scout Hall, which is the, the village hall, um, and uh, when we were wrecking, the, uh, there was a really lovely Zumba class that was going on, so this is where Framlingham holds its Zumba, uh, its tap and ballet classes. Uh, there was something um, advertising aqua aerobics, but I don't think that's here, I think that might be somewhere else. We're in the Scout Hall, which is where the, um, the DMDC, Danbury Metal Detecting Club, meet for their weekly meeting. 
And we did, this is our first day here, so it's our first day really with all the cast together, all the club members together, um, and it's the, the introduction to them at the, in the first episode. So that's a nice, nice thing to be doing. Three, two, one, action. So I said, if that turns out to be the case, I will change my name by D poll to Melinda Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite wonderful to be inside, even though it's a lovely day. Uh, just, you know, it, it means that we're not battling the weather. Roll, please. We're rolling. 3.50, We shoot as much as we can in one day, you know, and it's, uh, it's nice really to be in a very contained place because there's so much moving around in this show. We use the same fields, but they're not necessarily that close to the base. It's like a 20 minute drive. Action. This is one of the few bits of the program because there's a bit of the club pretty much in every show where we can be in one place for a few days and get the work done. Sorry, sorry, Terry, Terry I, I wasn't really concentrating. What do, uh, what do moist conditions mean? Deeper penetration. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you're being smutty, aren't you? Cover your ears, Sheila. You shouldn't have to listen to this filth. Mm. Oh, sorry, Sheila. I don't mind. Luckily, young Hugh doesn't get it. I haven't got my glasses on. Get what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think this series is it's been more relaxed than because you just know everyone better so yeah it's been a joy it's been a joy to come back to the countryside it's that nice peaceful job yeah it's lovely it's like yeah. working with friends yeah yeah so it's been nice and relaxed yeah we kind of reverted back to the first series a bit here so with the third with the with this one I think we feel like we had the most to do last series right because we were on all seven eps yeah and this time it's a bit of a return to the first where we're just in it less but it's about quality not quantity so <laughs> we get to hang out with the metal detectors more so yeah. that's fun and we had batteries in this time oh yeah so she's so feel like they her, trust her detectors now. never worked <laughs> now mine worked last time yours didn't oh, did it? oh yeah. mine didn't have batteries last year so she never really got to it did do now detector now was the tech thing i didn't yeah. find anything though no look at this got another solar farm yeah, there's not any land left to detect on soon but it's good, clean, sustainable energy, Louise. But over the times, embrace change. For me, like, because <laughs> I do a lot, quite a lot of big comedies, so I, I have to tell myself to tone it down in this because it's so real, and it's it's a gentle comedy, and I think it's subtle, and it's it's like a, I think it's beautiful. So the whole job just feels peaceful and mm. relaxed, and that, and you know that comes from the top, really. Mackenzie's so relaxed. Yeah. I mean, I've never done a comedy before. Or since. That's because she's not very funny. I know. So, I've only, why, so this she is hasn't great. got lines, not because that's part of the character, it's because she's not funny. She <laughs> yeah, can't deliver really lines. Why. I tried last year and they were like, nah, <laughs> no, it's take not it happening. Off her. No, but it's fun. It's funny. It's really hard to not laugh in between takes and keep a straight face. Yeah, we've been laughing a lot today, actually. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot. It's Pierce. So it's great. He's really naughty. <laughs> Do you know why he went to prison? Oh, yes, he did. Uh, uh, actually, you know, I'd rather not say. <laughs> It's not nice. <coughs> uh, my name is Divian Ladwa and I play Hugh. Uh, I'm Pierce Quigley and I play Russell. She thought he'd been working away in um, Colombia for 18 months. In the hotel industry. She was very emotional. Quite tearful. Uh, we have grown closer together, actually. Uh, we were just shooting a scene where we... Um, do a sort of jewellery retrieval service, which was set up in season two. And uh, we've continued doing that. And we've, we've just been filming a scene where we find... Um, Spoiler. Oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't say. I can say, okay. Um, so we find a prison badge number thing. Um, and then we go and find uh, the person's dead. So we give it to the widow. Um, and then there's a few jokes in and amongst all that which he delivers really, really well on the 10th take. Oh, now, I believe we have some jewellery retrieval service news. Russ? Indeed. Um, as you'll recall, uh, Hugh here found an interesting badge that 
turned out to be an identification tag for Her Majesty's Prison Chelmsford. Well, after some further research, we uh, managed to match the prisoner number to a uh, Mr. Oliver Meeker, who sadly he passed away in 1993. But we also found out that his widow is still alive and uh, she is living in Ipswich and we were able to return the, um, return the badge to her. Uh, I've not found anything. Um, I think you found that you found a lot of signals last time we shot out in the field. Oh yeah, when we were filming in the field. Um, when we were filming in the field, um, uh, it be we had a break, and Toby was lying on the grass, and and uh, I was. Um, Detecting. Detecting just in my in my break, and um, it kept going off every time it went over his crotch, and then I realised it was set to tiny penis, and yeah. then yours kept going off the whole time, and his was set to grass. Yeah, I didn't know there was a setting for grass. We're not very good at detecting in real life. No, not in real life quite poor. We're good at it in the show, aren't we? Oh, in the show, we're brilliant. Yeah, definitely. It's hard, it's actually quite difficult. I was detecting for a long time without any batteries. It doesn't work. Looking for treasure? Something like that. What have you found? Oh, bits and pieces. No gold? Nope. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah. We're in Framlingham at the moment. Everybody here, they're so wonderful with us. Uh, they, they, they could come up and say hello, uh, and uh, they all seem to like detectorists. So yeah, it's they, everybody has been so welcoming. Um, people kind of wander by and uh, you know stop and ask questions about what's going on. But everybody really lo loves the show, which is which is a real bonus. <laughs> we haven't had any you know anybody that's. Uh, objected to anything or everybody's really really welcoming here the locals have been amazing actually here in framlingham where we're based for the majority of the time they've really they've really warmed to us and we do kind of invade there's 50 people and lots of trucks and cables lying around but they very rarely complain because they've just accepted us so they seem to like us being here and i think we do something for for the town you know bring people into it i i suppose one would expect that the locals are like, oh, wow, a TV show's coming to shoot, shoot in our town. But, of course, Ed Sheeran lives here, so we're, you know, they're absolutely used to proper global superstars rather than a group of metal-detecting actors. So beautiful. It's so nice to be in the countryside. And everyone's so nice and stops us and say they love the show. Yeah, it's, so, I mean, particularly around in Framlingham. I mean, they're all out there now crowding around. So, yeah, it's very sweet, it's very sweet. And it's beautiful. It's, like I say, it's just a peaceful job because in between takes, you just get to sit here and look at the beautiful countryside. It's lovely. And I'm a Londoner. I don't get any... I don't, I've just seen grass. I haven't seen grass for a year, so... <laughs> we've been here, you know, this is like the fourth year we've come here because we had a, a year off and uh, everyone's used to us being here. They recognise the cast in the town. I think the, the show's done a little bit of good for the town, you know, people want to know where it's filmed and it's such a beautiful place. So, and the crew is so well behaved and quiet, uh, I couldn't believe anyone wouldn't welcome them back, to be honest. And the weather has been so, it's been glorious. Um, when we've been at the Hero Tree uh, in, uh, you know, in the fields, we've had two weeks of, of blazing sunshine. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've been really lucky. It just makes everything look beautiful. Insects have been just the same. They're still attracted to the yellow TR7. So wherever that goes, the, the swarms of insects go with. Oh yeah, no, that is true. Yeah, the, the yellow of the TR7 does attract um, does attract strange bug flying bugs. But uh, it's kind of been okay actually. It's been okay. We leave the TR7 over there, and we're over here. We're kind of fine. It just dist distracts them, and uh, yeah, so they uh, yeah they love a bit of the TR7. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting used to the countryside as well. We're not so, so such city people these days. Today we're filming uh, a scene with Mackenzie and I in the first episode where 
he is missing his shed and really loathing being under Veronica's roof. So he goes to sit in the garage amongst all his boxes um, and Becky goes to cheer him up. <laughs> who was it who said, any man who past the age of 30 finds himself without a shed can consider himself a failure? Ditch Marsh. <laughs> it's a really lovely thing and it reminds me actually of the first uh, scene in the first series between Becky and Andy that sort of sets up their uh, relationship, her gentle encouraging and loving of him and his slightly sort of dispirited um, attitude as to the fact that he's not massively successful or a hugely successful archaeologist, or, you know, and, and Becky um, just absolutely loves him and wants him to feel good about himself. I did a play with Rachel at the Donmar um, five years ago, I suppose, and yeah, we became friends then, and then when I came to <laughs> picking someone to play my wife, uh, she, she, I thought that she'd be a good person to act alongside, and she was, she was very happy to do it. Yeah, he's a tyrant. He's an absolute tyrant. He shouts all the time and makes us all miserable. Yeah, oh, yeah. disgusting. Oh, he's a monster. Awful. Monster. I can't work with him. Doesn't talk to us, actually. Just, just... So rude. So rude. It's a shame, really. It's a shame. Seems all right to me. Do you know which one he is? Not yet. I think he's the one behind the camera. <laughs> he's a total joy and uh, um, and the gentlest. He's, he's so quiet, Mackenzie. I mean, he's just so, so gentle and... Doesn't let him ad-lib. He, he does let me ad-lib, <laughs> sometimes. He, he reins me in. But yeah. If I could get away with what I wanted to get away with, I'd be looking at the camera after every line, you know, like... So he, he doesn't like any of that. No one does. No, thank you. First series, I was a bit of a rabbit in the headlights and was, you know, having to lean on, on the rest of the crew, uh, you know, considerably. Second time around, it got a bit easier. This time around, I've got a new director of photography, which I think has helped me a lot develop as a director. And um, yeah, I, f I feel like I'm actually uh, pulling my weight now. I don't think I can imagine anyone less egocentric than Mackenzie. <laughs> he's, you know, he's written such fantastic gags for everyone else, and uh, he's also so perceptive and intuitive um, about how and when to help uh, an actor. Often it's the case that actors make very good directors, but his his basic faith in everyone just generates a lot of good feeling and generates a lot of um, trust around the side. He's, he's an excellent director, because, uh, but it's direction that's almost invisible. You know. What three-letter generic name is given to the bird family Paradise? <laughs> Balliol, Potts? Tit. Tit is correct, yes. Classic. Classic. I, I, I don't think I've ever had any doubts about Mackenzie's writing at all, so I wasn't surprised to find that the, the quality of the humour was so strong and it's been sustained. And in some ways, I think it's the strongest series. Um, and that may well be because the, the, the characters are so bedded in now. And we all know how each other functions and he's writing so much for specific actors. There are bits and he says, I've done that because I know you enjoy doing that. and I, you know, and or I, I thought it'd be interesting to see you tr your character trying to do that. And so I think in that sense, there's a, there's a greater ease um, about the whole process, but it's never been, to be honest, it's never been a difficult job. It was a lot easier, strangely easier to write this third series. And it's almost a bit of a cliche, but I have come to know these characters so well, like they're my friends and I can hear them speaking. And so when it comes to dialogue, especially, it's really, simple for me to write what, what they would say because I know them so well. And it has been a joy this time round writing the scripts, whereas previously it was a little bit like getting blood out of a stone. But this time, yeah, maybe I'm hitting my stride. Did Andy tell you he's been snooping around? Who? Oh. Simon and Garfunkel. Well, the antique researchers. Didn't they change their name? Something ridiculous. The Dirt Sharks. We often get detectorists that uh, kind of are wandering around the field. 
they seem to love it. Every, everybody that we've encountered on the show absolutely really seem to love it. And uh, they, uh, yeah, they're, I, think they're, I think they're really impressed by the level of detail that Mackenzie writes into the script. The one really gratifying thing about the show, and it's down to Mackenzie's attention to detail and the fact that he does do metal detecting himself, that the programme doesn't patronise metal detecting, it's accurate about metal detecting, and it's done with a lot of affection about metal detecting. You know, you could look at it and say it's just used as a sort of metaphor for male friendship, and it is a great series about male friendship. I think probably the best comedy about male friendship that I can remember in the last 20 years on British TV. But the metal detecting stuff is accurate, and uh, metal detectorists tend to like it. And there has been a bit of a spike, I believe, in the sale of metal detectors. So I think it's had a small effect on that hobby. Detectors have really taken this to heart. It's, it's, it's been amazing. I, haven't, I, ne I didn't meet any in, during the first two series, any real life detectors, but I just recently accepted an invitation to go out detecting with some guys and, and it, was, it was brilliant. It was quite an eye opener, but I'm quite glad I didn't meet them beforehand for fear of writing them into the series as you know, real characters. So, but, but as far as I know, pretty much all you know, the detecting community enjoy the show. They, they learnt very early on that we weren't taking the mickey out of them, we weren't trying to parody them or make them look ridiculous. And so, you know, hopefully we portrayed them accurately and affectionately. Uh, each of, of the detectors in the show have an individual detector that it absolutely fits their character. And Mackenzie's very specific about that, specific about, you know, what it is, that, that a detector that suits each of their characters. So, um, so yeah, I think the, the actual detectress really appreciate all, all of that detail. I was doing it the other day, and because I've got a new one, I haven't got the same one as last year, but it's an American one. But it says I, I kept thinking I was finding something, and um, it was it was just it was nothing. It kept saying I was finding a nickel, and there was nothing there. Um, so no, I haven't ever found anything. Have you? Have you? No, I don't know how mine works. <laughs> and actually, I thought I had my headphones in, and um, I didn't, and I was beeping really loudly. Oh, Whilst yeah, they were we doing a take that. the other day, so that was fun. Yeah, no, terrible. We're rubbish. We're just sort of having it's fun. Really it's really hard. It is hard. Buttons and it's a lot of noises. And yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, I find it quite therapeutic, though, even though I don't know what I'm doing. I've never found anything, but I, 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 abs I Mackenzie frequently texts me, has t texted me in the interim between series, showing me um, stuff that he's found, and he's returned to locations where we filmed and found amazing stuff. Some stuff, you know, is getting checked out by museums and things. He's a proper metal detectorist, and I think they... Uh, the producer arranged for a group of anyone who was available to use some of our metal detectors and have a day out. And Mackenzie was the only one to find stuff there as well. So I think that that whole metal detecting culture has affected the crew to a certain extent. And um, it's a really nice vibe of metal detecting because it necessarily slows you down and makes everyone listen, you know, listen better. Uh, uh, so, so I think yeah, this, it, it's, a, it's a great emblem and badge of the show, in a way. I've been going back to that location that we shot the second series, uh, where the farmer's given me permission to detect, and I've been turning up some great stuff, and I found my first piece of gold earlier on in the year, and so that was a thrill. <laughs> and that's at the British Museum at the moment, being, being researched. They, they're having trouble finding out what that is. It's a piece of jewellery, old ancient gold from either Saxon or they think it might be Roman. So that's really exciting. And that's, that may be declared treasure before this series comes out, which would be amazing. <laughs>the cast and crew of this show have been absolutely superb. It's not the most expensive program on television, but it's executed so professionally, it looks so wonderful. Um, a fantastic cast and you know the fact that it's been cast really for who can do those roles you know it's not like let's get someone in there a star let's get this person in there fashionable obviously Toby is a star but he's an absolutely brilliant actor and he doesn't really appear in comedies and he's in this show because it's such a good script 
It's a unique job. Um, you walk to work because you're out in the fields, everyone mucks in. Uh, it's, there's, it's not luxurious, but it's totally comfortable because everyone is totally in sync with each other. Everyone, is, everyone knows the vibe of the show. Everyone, it's, it's a, it's a passion-led project for most people. No one's becoming millionaires making the show so that everyone is totally directed on how to make this the best possible thing it can be. So it's a very, very focused atmosphere. But there are also a lot of very funny people around the place, so it's also just a huge pleasure to be in their company, both during the day and then in the evenings, because we're all away from home. Oh, and I love Sheila. I want to put that on record as well. Greatest yeah, she's TV like, comedy character ever invented. She's probably my favourite character Sophie as well. Sophie Thompson, genius. Definitely, favourite character. You didn't say that this morning. What did I say this morning? Something on CBeebies that you were banging on about that you like. They really are a family. That's that's the thing that that when when I first came to the show, Mackenzie really welcomes everybody. All the cast really want to do the show. All the crew are back. Uh, yeah, everybody really wants. It's a show everybody really wants to do. The, the set is a happy place. I mean, you can tell on on arrival at what the vibe is and how everybody's doing, and it's just a charm boat to be on. You haven't got anyone in it who's out of place. I think we, we've made quite a lot of good programmes, but this is right up there. You know, so nicely executed, you know, and it's a very calm environment. People enjoy working on the programme. And, you know, there are some shows in TV where they don't. It's right. better than waitering, yeah. Oh, definitely better than waitering. I suppose it does have some Nando's parallels. Yeah. The money. Actually, no, the money's better at Nando's. It gets saucy, though, doesn't it? Cat, please. I've been saying that this is it, this is the last series, and I think that's probably true, but then it's not, it's not a big enough deal to make an announcement about, because if something does occur to me later on and Toby's up for it and, and would like to do it again, then, then maybe they will. But I think I'm at least going to put it aside for, for a while, uh, yeah, and, and concentrate on other things. I don't know what I'm doing next, but I definitely would like to write more and I'd like to direct more. Um, that's what I'm really enjoying doing at the moment. And, and the days, yeah, when I'm not acting on this and I can concentrate on the directing, I'm finding an absolute joy. So, so you know, I, I think maybe that's the direction I'm heading.